Hey, this is Mike here, and I'm, I'm really excited. I'm here with Brian Magnosi, and we're going to go inside uh, a business that's uh, been making anywhere from Brian's business. Um, uh, Brian's been pulling down anywhere between $20,000, uh, $30,000, even $40,000 per month um, with, his, uh, with a combination of his, his uh, day job killer stuff, especially with day job killer stuff. He's also made a bunch of money in some different ways that he's going to get into. But uh, I'm, I'm particularly excited for this, Brian. I'm so glad that you agreed to do this for Project Xers. Uh, this is it's something that Brian's worked, uh, Brian and I have worked really hard on behind the scenes. Um, we uh, uh, you know, stayed up late, working early now. And we're going to start here, Brian, by getting into um, the psychology of selling because you really feel like that's a, a big foundational behind how you've had your success. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's no shortcut for thinking right, because thinking right leads to believing right, which leads to doing right, and hey, it just goes on from there, you know. All right, great. Um, so you, you prepared uh, a presentation. Now, you have a, a really solid background in sales, but then once you transition to SEO, then there's a real, um, there's a real interplay between the ranking and the selling, and, and then also just the you know, when you put, throw the client in there, there's a lot of moving parts going on. And uh, how, how, do you, um, how do you fundamentally handle that? Like, a lot of it for you is beginning with a strong frame in place. Right, right. I, I think, you know, I always encourage anyone that I talk to, and certainly when I talk to myself, I always start with the end in mind. You know, what do we really want to accomplish? And how do we want to go about accomplishing that should be the second question. And then and lastly, it's like, like you said, it's like building a house. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get on top of the, the foundation that we're gonna build, um, and everything you do stems from that foundation. So for me, it's it's really the way that you position yourself um, helps you better manage all the moving parts associated with you know local client consulting, and you do it really effectively too. Terrific. Now you put together a keynote presentation for us. Can we have a look at that? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, just bear with me here and switch over. Let me know when you can uh, see my screen. I can see it. Okay, great. Now I'll just make this full size. Just one second. And what we'll do is we'll go through this presentation and then I can ask you some questions about this and maybe we'll do some role playing. Okay, great. So let me know if you can see that. Uh, I can. I can see it well. Okay, great. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, you know, the psychology of, of selling is so underestimated. You know, there was a guy who called me yesterday and and he said, you know, I'm doing all the right things, but I'm not getting any results. And he's obviously not doing all the right things, but he thinks he is. And right. This is the problem. <laughs> right. So um, there's nothing more important than understanding uh, the role that you play uh, between a potential prospect uh, and you and even clients. Because clients and prospects are really no different, it, it, with the exception of one's pain and one isn't. So right. just jump right into this. And, uh, so what I've got here on the screen is W-I-I-F-T. What's in it for them? A lot of people say, well, what's, this, what's in it for me? Well, who really cares? <laughs> it's really all about them initially. And then you can turn the, the, the tables around. So ultimately, I mean, if, you're, if your potential prospects or your potential customers, all they care about is what are they going to get by working with you? How is it going to be? How are you different? You know, your, I call it your UVP or your USP. What's the value that you're going to bring that's intrinsic to you that nobody else can deliver? Because ultimately, you're you and nobody else is you. Yeah. But that's not enough, right? I mean, you've got to be able to deliver tangible value to these people. I mean, these people are running local businesses, right? They're attorneys, they're doctors, they're, um, you know, they're, they're multi-million dollar company owners. And, you know, their time is limited. They just want to get to the point. I want to make money, and it's got to be—it's pretty objective. So yeah. let, let me let me read this slide out loud for people, so it's not distracting. Um, what do your potential prospects slash customers gain from working with you? What's your unique value proposition or USP, like you're saying? What separates you from everybody else? What personalized services, attention to details, result in etc. What what are the things that make you stand out? Mm -hmm. Exactly, and. That's easy to do if you take just a couple of minutes before, like I said, start with the end of the night and just try to think about, well, how do I want to be different? How could I be different? And the big uh, component to this, it's almost like the gas that goes in the engine. 
the key to success with selling isn't selling at all. It's the it's the opposite of that. If there's anything I've learned in 15 years in corporate America and pharmaceutical sales, which is really aggressive, um, and selling just you know with our own business here in the past five and a half years online, it's you got to you got to do something that would seem counterintuitive. You think, oh, I've got to go tell you how great my service is and how blah, 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 blah. Who cares? Right? The customer just wants to know what's in it for them, and you want to be able to demonstrate your power, as we're going to talk about here, in a way that doesn't come across like braggadocious. Got it. You just you really want to focus on the unselling, right? Just be you, be real, and be a person's power. So let's, um, let's take a look at here. You said uh, the, the second point. What I'll do is I'll read each of these points when they come up so they're not distracting. The okay. key to successful selling isn't selling at all. It's being able to shift your customer's focus uh, to what they can have, not what you're selling. So uh, it's not a question of what you're selling. Uh, the, the question is, what's, what, what are they going to experience because of what you're selling? Uh, right. you know, is their phone going to be ringing off the hook? Are they uh, going to have you know, extra money in their pocket to take that vacation to Disney World with the family or whatever it is that they're looking for? Um, you know, uh, this, the classic idea is not so much what's the features of what you're selling, but what's the benefit? Now, the market has evolved in sophistication where more and more business owners automatically realize that there is a direct benefit from rankings on Google. But even then, they still have it a little bit in their back of their mind. How beneficial is this going to be? You know, how big of a deal is this? Like once they start opening up their wallet, they might even be going out thinking, I want to rank. But then they start recoiling. When they start reaching for their wallet, they start thinking, oh, man. Um, but how much is this worth? How much will the phone ring? How much is this going to cost? And, and that's something that we really need to, that's an objection we need to deal with. Absolutely. It's, it's huge. You know, there's two ways to think about this whole thing. Uh, it's either being on the offense or being on the defense. Now, to, and I put here the value of an offensive conversation. It's not irritating somebody. I, I meant, you know, the opposite of defensive. So you really want to think like football, right? You want to you grab the ball. You want to run with it. You want to have a specific play. And, you know, that's not that difficult to do if you just think ahead two or three steps, just like what we have here on the screen. Great. So this says leading the conversation is essential to taking on more clients. Lead the conversation by asking a few open-ended questions that focus on their pain and your solution. Build rapport first, then ask why, uh, th then ask why them, how you can help them, and what their expectations are. Have they ever done paid advertising, or do they uh, use any a, a, a big indicator uh, if whether they'll start or not? So, what do you mean by that, Brian? Over all the conversations that I've had, many, many dozens of conversations over the past few years with potential clients, uh, I can't remember a single one uh, that ever got started with me who didn't already do some sort of paid advertising. The sad thing is, at least in, in my region, I'm up here in you know, upstate New York, uh, the sad thing is that for business owners who don't believe, they don't see the value of internet marketing and, and advertising online, generally don't get it, and a conversation with you isn't necessarily going to tip them over. It certainly could. But with me, I mean, if I've had 50 conversations, I bet you 49 out of 50 never turned out of those who didn't do any advertising online already. It's those who've you know, spent money with pay-per-click, or maybe they had another SEO agency, or maybe they, they bought some banners, or it could even be you know, that they've spent money with a digital agency because I work with ad agencies and I understand that. You know, some of their clients are spending tens of thousands of dollars a month, sometimes a hundred thousand a month with them. Wow. And so they see the value, right? Right. So so, they, so, so one of the things um, uh, with the with, with a given client is how sophisticated are they? If if they're not sophisticated enough to already be spending money on some sort of internet venture, whether it's on SEO or on paid advertising or something, you know, having to do with internet advertising, then for you, you're, you're going to kind of keep things on a short leash. Right. All right, right. great. Absolutely. I think of a conversation I had with an attorney who's uh, uh, become a client in, uh, for almost a year now, something like that, maybe eight months at this point, thousands of dollars a month, great client, but you know, he had never done SEO. He had only done uh, Yellow Book, uh, Phone Book. 
debt, and he was spending two thousand a month on bubble debts. And he said, you know, I, sp I just spent twenty six thousand dollars, and I got a big fat goose egg out of that. It was a joke. And he said, I finally realized that the real power is on the internet, and I want to do something. I mean, wow. So of all the people that I've talked to, he was the one guy who maybe hadn't spent any money online, but he still had spent money. And right. So, so, so he's used to spending money. Like one of the things to, to look for is. If you've got a business owner that isn't spending any money whatsoever on any sort of advertising, then you're really going to start running into trouble. Uh, at least if you've got somebody who's spending money offline, you can try to see if they're looking. Because it, and how did you make that that bridge? Like, was he somebody who contacted you, or did you contact him? This was through one of my sort of ninja strategies so via video and uh, marketing, and ended up uh, uh, coming through that particular avenue. So. Um, it was kind of interesting how that sale actually came about, and uh, I covered, we'll, we might be able to touch on that. Okay, sounds good. All right, great. Let's move along. Okay. You know, there's uh, there's something about being a person of power. You know, not not in some mystical sort of woo way, but just being the person who um, understands their value. I mean, if anything that I missed and missed really big in the first couple of years because I didn't understand my value. I underestimated my value and my skill set, both of which can be extremely deadly in this business and in life in general. Great, so let's take a look at this. The value of, uh, we're still on the value of offensive conversations, uh, like being on the offense. Segue into your power. When you demonstrate your expertise and you position yourself as a market leader, you don't need to sell. Never act needy. <laughs> so true, ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, you, I, I've had conversations with you where you felt on the defensive with uh, with clients, and I've I, I've seen you when you're feeling like really feeling your strength. You had a recent conversation. Um, there was a recent deal that you closed for a, a fourteen thousand dollar deal, and it was just something that you didn't even feel like you wanted to do without that big upfront payment. And uh, when you shifted out of the mindset of feeling like, well. Like, like first you were thinking to yourself, well, would I do this for 5000 And you just, it was a big project. You didn't want to do it for 5000 And it was funny because you said that to somebody, you know, I, I wouldn't want to do this for less than 14000 And the guy said, well, why don't you charge 14000 It's exactly right. You know, and about a month ago, I had a similar situation where, you know, I guess I had come to the place where, you know, I quoted a local client that found me through, um, you know, my SEO ranking. So, you know, the phone rings through my city SEO. And um, anyway, you know, I gave them three quotes, basically, three uh, options. And the least expensive option was $8,000 a month for SEO. Oh, wow. That was the least expensive. Now, granted, what, they actually didn't what, become a customer. Yeah, anymore. what market were they in that you're charging uh, so much for the minimum? Uh, they, they do, like, uh, JavaScript training and uh, web-based training. Got it. For uh, large companies. So, so it, was funny, like a, it was like a national firm? Yeah, they're, they're locally here, but um, sure. yeah, but they're national. Right. So uh, interestingly enough, they didn't. They they hired another company, uh, and it wasn't because of the money. That what they said was the other company had like thirty plus employees, and we didn't think you you had um, the ability to handle uh, an account this big. Oh wow! I mean, just, just again, just proves their complete ignorance. The clients are ignorant. They're just completely ignorant. They think they know what they're talking about, but they don't. This is why, again, you know, coming back full circle. You've got to lead the conversation. You've really got to direct that. And I found that out after the fact. But you know what? I didn't really want that sale anyway. I know it sounds bizarre, but I didn't. I just really am into creating you know, some, some different streams of income. And it was a big job. It was going to be a lot of work. And I just didn't really have the, the drive to say, okay. So I probably could have pushed a little harder. But um, that's sure. another story. Sure. Great. So let's talk about being the ninja master. <laughs> So if you want to read that, there's probably... Okay. Uh, potential customers will believe uh, what, what you tell them, uh, just as long as you believe what you're saying. When you act like the expert, people will believe you. Uh, so true. There's nothing more... And that was a big reason that I had so much clinical failure, uh, is because I didn't get the results that I was looking for in, in the early years, in the first couple of years. And occasionally I still find myself with that junky thinking kind of creeping up. And no, no, no. Not, I refuse to accept that. Um, believing in what what you're saying to somebody else is, I wouldn't say it's half the battle, I'd say it's probably three quarters. Got it. Yeah. Um, all right, great. 
Now, then you say 99% of all prospects will never ask you technical SEO question because they either don't know what to ask or they don't care. The, uh, the best and the highest paying customers I've ever had only care about results, not ha uh, how you're going to get those results. So they may not even ask you about Penguin or Panda or spammy links, uh, you know, or silo architecture or anything like that. They're, they're more just thinking, um, like, like, what's the end result? And, and from, from your standpoint, you know, you as the ninja master, like, the, the idea of a ninja master is something kind of mystical that's just kind of out there. All that SEO knowledge is mystical to them. That's fine. Keep it mystical. You're the one who's delivering, you know, this shock and awe results. You're the one that, that can put them on page one, number one. You're the one that can make them number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Um, so, so, so you're the one that can just deliver this heavy-duty result, and that's what they're looking for. Now, how do you position yourself as the master? You know, that's a great uh, question. And um, to just follow up on what you're just saying here, uh, and I want to make sure this distinction is made because some people feel like SEO is just so massive and so all-encompassing that they can't really wrap their head around it. Everything we need to know is right here in Project X. I mean, not kidding. Um, and so there's three ways that uh, people can demonstrate their expertise. There's just certainly three ways that I do it, and I'll just drop them on the screen here. So, okay, we've got to build, build a website and get it ranked. You could ask what's that if you want. Write an ebook and teach prospects about SEO. This could be as short as four to six pages. Shoot a video or multiple videos uh, and rank that for each specific keyword. In the video, teach prospects about SEO, demonstrate results of your own or site ranking, and give a free copy of your ebook. Now, is this something that you're doing at all? Absolutely. Uh, I, I wrote a book called Winning Internet Marketing. It happens to be 63 pages. It doesn't have to be that long. <laughs> but you know, I just, and I had a really beautiful cover made and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to just kind of go over the top. I'm kind of an over, t over the top kind of guy. Is this an ebook or a physical book that you had printed? Uh, I actually wrote two. I wrote one, uh, um, Avoiding the Five uh, Mistakes Memo uh, for Online Marketing. That's a physical book. I actually have it on the bookshelf behind me. I can grab it and show you. But um, the other one is an ebook. And, and so do you, do you send your uh, potential customers your ebook? Um, yes, I do. Yeah, I mean, they can opt in to get to that, or, um, you know, I, I generally make a point. Hey, by the way, you read my book, and then boom, and I just send it to them. Okay, and, and uh, so wh what do you think happens, like, when you when you send them that book, how do they feel about it? Like, what goes on for them in their minds, like, reading that book? I think that even if they never open a page of the book, I think that what they're going to walk away with instantly is... Uh, Instant expert status. I mean, how many people have written a book? I, mean, I don't right. care if it's an ebook or not. I wrote a book, and by the way, anytime that you, even if, even if you really are new to this and you really don't know what you're talking about, go watch some of the videos from you or from some of the other people, Greg, and just go make a, you know, ten or twenty bullet points, make a chapter out of each, and go write like a five or ten page book just based on what everyone is teaching here. And nobody would know that you ever did that. You're instantly positioned as the expert. Yeah, Master. and again, even if it's a short book, would it be possible? Would you would you mind making that book available to people for them to browse? Project Excerpt. Yeah, that's that's absolutely. a wonderful value for people. Um, I, I I'd like to kind of include that as a part of uh, what we're doing next. Because one of the things I'd like to do when we're done with this video is, is do some role playing. Because I think that that'd be tremendous with you. Um, so now let's get into this shoot a video or multiple videos that rank uh, for each specific keyword. So you're talking about ranking. Um, in the first place, right now ahead of things. Now remember, as a Project Xer, you're um, most welcome to use Water Damage St. George, um, Nashville SEO, and a Gold IRA, Greg's uh, e-cigarette site. You can use any of our sites as examples of what you can do. Um, you, you can say as a, uh, uh, as a program you're a part of, as a company that you're a part of, any way that you want to frame it that you're comfortable with. Um, so you can use that in terms of the, the website game ranking, or you can rank your own website, which I think is terrific and builds up a lot of confidence. Now, with this shooting a video, you've got shoot a video for mul uh, or multiple videos to rank for each specific keyword. In the video, teach prospects about SEO, demonstrate results uh, of your own videos uh, or site ranking, um, or give away a free copy of your ebook. So this is something that you're actually doing in the rankings for like your city SEO. Is that what you mean? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so th so this is kind of a positioning. You've seen what I do with, with uh, my, my city SEO, which is a straight, you know, you can go to Nashville SEO and just see it. Um, you know, my video is right there. It's a straightforward sales pitch. What you're saying is more of a 
uh, a picture in picture video or something along those lines where you're showing stuff on the screen, you're demonstrating, hey, here I am, I'm ranking number one for, um, you know, uh, uh, Syracuse plumbers or for Tallahassee um, restaurants or, or whatever. And the way I did it is, and, and kind of give people like a high level perspective on how you're doing it. Yeah, I mean, I'm all, all into what results. I mean, and sometimes some cliche saying, and there's an old school one that says the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So if you can demonstrate results, even if it's a couple of videos, a video, whatever, a uh, long tail keyword, then that's huge. And you know what, if I was a paying customer or a customer of a local business, I'm not gonna hire somebody who's not at the top of Google. Sorry, if you can't get there, next, you're out. Yeah. And that, that's how I think, not everyone thinks that way. I was surprised, especially when we first started it, my website was not ranked at the top of Google, though I had you know, videos and stuff. And there were people who signed up, like Greg Mitchell, for a thousand bucks a month, or twelve hundred dollars a month, and did not question it because they had confidence in me. I love that. Great. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, so a couple of we just covered some of these things. You know, really saturate the market. It's the dominator space. It's it's kind of the OMG, NHB, Greg Morrison, Jimmy Kelly, you know, um, concept of you're just going to completely crush your competition. I, I am extremely competitive. Um, I love to win. So, you know, these are a handful of keywords that I'm number one for, yeah, and it took a handful pull. of links. I mean, I barely did anything. I'm, you know, top three for a bunch of others, but I, I think I did, I don't know, maybe five or ten links All right. total. And I'm, pull, I'm pulling this up. So we've got Buffalo SEO. I'll pull this up right now. Yeah. And who knows what you're seeing, but I'm number one here. It's yeah, I see it. You're right here. Your authorship yeah. and everything. Uh, Magnosi website market, marketing slash bu uh, Buffalo dash SEO. Interesting to, to, to note that you're not even using your city SEO. And, and this is, okay. you mentioned this during one of our videos, it's pretty funny. But, uh, bu Buffalo SEO dot net is advertising and they say Buffalo SEO dot, dot net top rated SEO firm, but then you're clearly number one and they're not. So that's kind of funny. Are they even on page one? I guess they're almost better off not being on page one at that point because that would almost bring up more, more questions. I don't, I don't see them anywhere, so that's, that's funny. Now, are, are any of these videos you? Uh, yeah, I think I've got a video for Buffalo SEO and another one for Syracuse. Um, I don't think I did one for Rochester, so I've got I think a video. It used to be number three. Yeah. Uh, and I had press release number one, but I haven't bothered to do anything with it. Yeah, I see this video is on page two, so it's at the top page two. So you can look at this video in terms of the content of it. Obviously, if Brian just blasted more links to it, it, uh, it would rank higher, and, and then that's yeah. that. All right, so that's Buffalo SEO. Let's have a look here. Uh, let, let's do um, Rochester SEO. And, you know, it's, uh, basically, we're probably looking at the same thing. Yeah, same thing. Still, uh, still number one with the, um, with, with the, the, the Google authorship, and, and there, uh, th there's Brian. And uh, presumably, it's the same thing for um, Yeah, for same deal. Yeah, it looks yeah. like looks like you could do Facebook. All right, great. There's a Facebook page uh, on there, by the way, in case you want to outrank it. All right, so so great. So, so those are some examples. Now, you, uh, 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 our members are welcome to use Nashville SEO as an example and Waterdam St. George. So keep that in mind. All right, um, great. So what I'd like to do now, this this is the end. This this is the last slide we have. Um, it's your choice. Always remember, it's your business, your choice. You have the power. Uh, never hand over your power to a prospect or client. Doing so could cost you more than just a few bucks each month. What do you mean by that? You've got uh, two train tracks going two different directions. I mean, it's just like you could go left or you could go right. You could, you could choose to hand over your power. You could sort of be subservient or a slave to a business owner. You could yeah. come for like what I call this, a little cog in, the, in their wheel. Or you could run a business of your own choice, of your own making, where you have the power. You don't have to take every client or any client if you don't want to. It's got to be that win-win relationship or scenario with everybody. And so if it's not, then you know what? Um, who wants to acquiesce or cow down to somebody else all the time? It makes you feel weak and powerless, and you know what? You kill your sales. You, you will lose more than a few dollars. You lose self-confidence, and, and ultimately you're going to lose your ability to make money uh, if you continue to just sort of be the weak man for lack of a better term. You know, um, there was an interesting situation that I think that, that demonstrates well what you're saying. Uh, you have one, one of your bigger clients, uh, was having some upheaval at his company. His, his partner was having some problems. And uh, anyways, they, they were, you know, this had to do with a medical practice. And you called me up this one time, and, and it was really frustrating. Like, what you were hearing from them 
was all this negativity. And eventually you just kind of shut off what they were saying and just said, well, like, you know, whatever they're paying me is what they're paying me. If they're paying me, then that's fine. I'll work on the project. If they're not, then they're not. And you kind of tuned out the noise. And really, they, they've ultimately shaped up to be a much better partner at this point with you just kind of, like, really treating them at that point more like an ATM machine and less like a... Well, because, you know, um, my point is, if you're going to have somebody who's going to be adversarial and combative, it doesn't mean that you can't do business with them. But then you're not going to be friends. And don't pretend like you're friends. Like, if someone's going to... You know, you don't have that expectation that they're going to be your friend. You know, if they're going to act like an ATM machine, then if an ATM machine isn't giving you money, you're not staying in front of it. That's it. There's plenty of people who are going to expect you to talk and talk and talk to them, even though they're not giving you money. And so you can, you can certainly say, well, listen, um, you know, if you want me to work for you, that's great. I hear what you're saying. You know what my rates are. You know, let's get started. And if they can't hack that, then you move on and, you know, you, you just say, okay, well, I'm going to move on to the next thing and that's right. fine. And, and of course th that's a little bit more of an extreme situation, but hopefully it helps you see a, a bit of a crossroads because it, it can be really in business. It can really turn into a situation where people are taking more and taking more and taking more and giving less and giving less and giving less uh, to the point where you're really kind of strung out and, you know, mm -hmm. like um, kind of chasing after them. You don't want to be in that position. Brian, what I'd like to do now, uh, th that was the last sli slide, is that correct? Uh, I think it was, yeah. I think it was, yeah. That was, that was Great. Um, so, so we've got, uh, uh, got questions off hours with, with Greg Michael Fletch, and then you've got your email address here, which is, sorry, it just disappeared there for a second. Uh, oh, Brian yeah. at magnosiwebmarketing.com. Brian at magnosiwebmarketing.com. What I'd like to do now, I love this, uh, uh, getting the psychology straight. Now what I want to do is apply this. So let me stop this video and let's get into some role playing. All right, Brian, uh, let's get into some role playing. So um, l let's imagine that, uh, let's get an, uh, an idea of how you meet some of your clients. Um, so you're, you're probably at this point in your career not, not much into cold calling. Um, so okay. l let's imagine that you knew somebody already, uh, some way or another. Uh, let's imagine you, um, who knows, you got a parking ticket or, or a speeding ticket. Let's say you got a speeding ticket and you decided to get a lawyer for it, okay? Um, I'm not saying that you speed, but let's just say that you did or, or, or whatever. <laughs> and uh, you wanted to get a lawyer because you thought that, you know, it could be a problem. Maybe, maybe it was like, it was 25 miles per hour and you're going 45 miles per hour and that's 20 miles per hour of speed limit. It's reckless driving. I'm sorry. I, I'm not saying that Ryan would do this. Brian would do this, but let, let's just... Let's say for the sake of argument. So you hired, you hired an attorney, and he asks you, and this could have been a dentist. It could have been the same kind of thing. So let's do one of these kind of conversations. And you've had these kind of conversations. You, you know where I'm going with this, where he asks you, well, what, what do you do for a living? So let's start, let's start with that. Um, so it's kind of you know, time in between. You're not working on the case or whatever. Um, and and uh, he's like, uh, so, so, uh, so Brian, what, what do you do for a living? Oh, I do internet marketing. I run an SEO company. Oh, I see. Uh, what uh, is that? The um, with Google, where you know they, uh, what is it, they have the because we have a guy. Well, we had a guy. What what's uh, what do you, what do you do exactly? It's a really great question. I do a lot of things, but to break it down, I drive my clients' websites to the top of Google, help them crush their competition, and uh, make a lot more money. A, a lot more money. Now, do you do, because we did, we did the, uh, some of the, we, what are they called, the paid advertisements? Uh -huh. We, we did, pay-per-click, yeah, we, we did, we did, we had a, we had a guy doing that, and then we had another guy who was doing the, um, you call it the SEO? Mm -hmm. Search engine optimization. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was working for us for a while, um, and then something happened, and it just didn't, um, you know, something happened where, where, well, anyways, we don't work with them anymore, but I'll tell you this. We, then we got a new guy, and he said that the old guy screwed up our website, and uh, there was now, now there's a problem with it, and so now I've hired a new guy, and he says he's doing something, you know, but I'm paying him, you know, a bunch of money, 
mm-hmm. and um, we're just not you know, we're not showing up in the rankings. Maybe you can help. I always have to help by all means. You know, SEO is um, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of moving parts, and there's a lot of guys who think they know what they're doing or claim they know what they're doing. But I think at the end, what's most important for you as a business owner, because I would think that if I were in your shoes. Just deliver me results. Show me the results. What are the results that you're getting in your particular company? Or, you know, if you're running an SEO company, hey, you ought to be able to deliver results, not just for your clients, but for yourself as well. It's like a calling card. So, you know, I'm happy to help. You just want to make sure that these guys, they know what they're doing and what are the great ways to test them. Do they get results for themselves? Do they have any other clients at the top of Google? Uh, because that's a pretty good indication of what they really know or what they really don't. Well, do you have? Uh, I mean, what what results do you have? What what you, do you have? A, do you have a uh, you know a a um, you know lawyers that you do? Absolutely, uh, I do. In fact, and uh, I've been attorney a group. We've uh, been working with them for about eight months, and uh, yeah, I and mean, they're at the top of Google for their very best keywords. And you know, when you first hired me, you said, "Hey, I just I just want to get on the first page." And we got him on the first page, and then we got him, you know, top five for, uh, I think, every single major keyword. And he's top, he's top three for the, for the big keywords. The, so what do you mean top three? So he's number three? He's like number one or number two, number three, depending on the keywords. So he's at the very top of the search results for his most profitable keywords, you know, um, like Buffalo. Uh, he's in Buffalo, New York. It's like Buffalo personal injury, you know, lawyer, or attorney. Oh, personal injury. That's, that's really competitive. That's expensive. Uh, expensive is relative. I think what's really expensive is losing more business than, than you're taking in because you're not at the front uh, of the uh, search results. If you're not in the front of your, of your potential prospects thinking, right? Your, your customers or potential customers need to see you everywhere, right? They, they want to know that you're like the market leader. One of the best ways to do that, dominate Google. Take well, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth position and more. Well, now, how much do you cost? Well, there's no cookie cutter anything here with me. I'm, I'm a little bit different than you know, some of the other SEOs out there in that they've got package A, B, or C. I don't do packages because there are no, uh, no two businesses are the same. So that's said, what I do is I take a look at your competition, um, how difficult it would be to get the results. And if we have to, and a big thing here, do we need to clean up the kind of the mess that the last guy made? And that's, uh, I can fix the mess. But I just would need to take a few minutes. Well, I've got my uh, I've got my uh, my iPad here. Can we can, can you look things up? I mean, can you can you tell me how much it would cost? Uh, I certainly could, but I would do you a disservice if I didn't take some time to do that. So uh, we've got two ways we can go. We can take five minutes and just take a real cursory glance. Can we do that? Yeah, let's do it. I've got my iPad right here. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, so, uh, so Brian, do you, do you want to pull up your uh, screen share and we can try to look like what would you look at? What would you pull up uh, for that guy? And I can try to figure out, kind of make up a person for you here. Uh, sure. So uh, let me just share my screen again. And let's uh, let's open up Google. Just give me a second to open up that browser. So we'll pull up. Uh, I've opened Site Explorer, Majestic SEO, Ahrefs. Those are uh, SEM, uh, uh, SEMrush. Um, so just uh, let's pull up some of those. Let's make it. Uh... Um, so let's make it, I'm going to go to page nine here. Um, all right, let's make it this guy. Let's make it SyracuseCourtLawyer.com. Um, slash. So, so I, I went to page nine of Google and I found, uh, wait, where did it go? So the, the site is SyracuseCourtLawyer.com, and then he's got slash traffic dash citations.html. Okay, and uh, can you hit control plus on your screen to just kind of zoom things in a little bit more, please? Oh, sure. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's better. Okay, did I get that URL right? Uh, slash traffic dash citations, and it's, then it's .html. This is, uh, I found this guy, it's t- 
Tom, Thomas R. Ryan, uh, W. Ryan. That's your, that's your attorney, by the way, for your speeding ticket. <laughs> okay, so there's no results. Um, Syracuse court. Oh, maybe wait. just the root. Yeah, let's try SyracuseCourtLawyer.com and see what we get. SyracuseCourtLawyer.com. And maybe we'll just find somebody else here. Yeah. I did speeding ticket. I, I, I did Syracuse speeding ticket lawyer and I went to page nine. This, how about this one? He's on page two. He definitely would want it. You think page two? All right. Let's grab the page two guy. All right. So we're going to grab uh, this guy. D-A-G-U-E law.com. See, I'm just hoping he's going to have some links or something. Okay, so Brian's got uh, Moz, uh, OpenSiteExplorer.org. He's got Majestic SEO, and then A traps up. Wow, look at that. Do you see his referring pages? Oh. Spam. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's pretty obvious right there. It's a pretty awful backlink <laughs> profile. Wait, this is a teachable moment right here. Don't do this. D don't have it. This just doesn't look natural at all. From, from, like from halfway through September to a week later, you're just not going to have 800 additional pages flow into your website referring to This is crazy. Wow. It's got all over the place. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, that definitely seems to fit his personality. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna take a look at his anchors here. Yeah. Okay, so pretty high in the generic. Little. Yeah, website. What's that? That's kind of interesting. Let's take a look here. Well, no surprise, lawyers.com. Sure. Sure. 287 links all coming with the exact same anchor from one website. It's not good. Yeah. It's lawyers.com, which is weird. So it's got to be just a paid ad, right? Uh, yeah, lawyers.com does paid and free. My uh, current attorney uh, group is running into this situation. Same deal. They did a paid gig with them years ago. Some of the links still stuck. And anytime you're getting more than, you know, 1% of the links coming from the same domain, you know, in any volume, that's, that can be pretty bad. Are you going to disavow those? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, some of the, some of the links we disavow for this guy. The others, uh, he's having a conversation with lawyers.com and see if we can make him no follow instead of do follow. Okay, great. So we've got, yeah. What's weird is he has, none of his anchor text is actually helping him for this keyword. Like he has no useful anchors at all. Do you see any? I mean, attorney and counselor at law with an ampersand. Like courts and geographical regions of practice lawyers. Can you can you zoom in on this? Can you hit Control Plus so we can see these keywords? Is that better? Let me do it again. Yeah, just a couple more times because it's it's pretty pretty far away. Yeah, maybe even one more time if you can. There we go. Yeah, that's much better. So we're kind of zoom, we're, we're kind of uh, closely zoomed in. So all of his anchor texts are like useless. And they would be helpful if uh, he had other keywords, you know, to balance it. I mean, having a website is fine as an anchor, and his brand and URL links those are great as well. However, I mean, there's just not one that's like speeding ticket lawyer Syracuse. No exact match. There's nothing anywhere close. It's just some really junky stuff. 
Well, there's but, one church law attorney in Syracuse, New York. Okay, but yeah. but church law does that come up a lot? Uh, apparently, it, I've never heard of that, but it's about it's bankruptcy, you would think. Okay, but he's got one. Is that traffic and speeding tickets? One traffic, one. but he's got the and sign. It's weird. Yeah, and speeding tickets in upstate New York. Oh, that's a compound anchor tax, you say? Yeah, yeah, there it is. So, so, his, is so we've got, like, his SEO guy is just one on, on drugs or something. He has one backlink, and it's, uh, like, a compound long tail exact mesh. One link. How many links does the guy have again? How did this guy get on page two? 22. Yeah, good question. 23 whole links. Well, hey, I don't care if there's two links, if he's, if he's telling me in the first page, but he's not. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, great. All right, so so what would you say to this guy? So, all right, so, so we'll step back out, like, you know, uh, we'll step out of the nerd conversation between the two of us. Let's go back. You're, you're talking to Mr. Mr. Dag, Raymond. I'm Raymond. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, so uh, you're looking at stuff here. Um, what, what else are you going to look, like, uh, look, look at before you talk to him? And so we're going to take a look over to Open Site, uh, or sorry, Majestic, and uh, let's see what we've got here. I like looking at uh, three variables over here, personally. I like looking, obviously, at the number of backlinks relative uh, to his anchors. So it's kind of the same thing as we just, excuse me, did an A address, but I like to see the trust flow and the citation flow. And this particular tool, um, anything above 10, I can say that for both of these is pretty decent, but it's pretty weak. Right, this tells me he could use some more social. Uh, my guess is if we look at the whopping 23 links he has, none of them are social related. So that's, I mean, that probably bumped and ring on the first page. He's doing some citations for the guy, quite honestly, which, you know, he's just like push three buttons, order citations, uh, done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. What citations would you get? I use Bright Local. Uh, I've used Yext in, in the past. Uh, yeah. But, uh, and, and when you're saying citations, that stuff, you know, the, the Web 2.0 is like, Foursquare, Yelp, um, uh, you know, having a Facebook fan page, YouTube, uh, j just the, the, those various Web 2.0s, yeah, super like pages. With, with the big ones, personally. You know, I like to start with uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, um, you know, Twitter, YouTube, Google+. I mean, those are probably my five favorites. And then once we make sure we've got those and we've got a little bit of a conversation going, even if it's just a, you know, a couple of posts a week, you know, as long as he's got about 600 characters or uh, words total, then, you know, over the course of, you know, a few weeks or something, that'll look real. Um, and that's just, you know, very subjective, but I think that's a good measure. Yeah, just build, building out a social profile for him here. And yeah, then, exactly. And, and then to me, this guy could really use, like, like a couple of um, just uh, PBN links that just have keywords that are going to be useful for him. Oh, yeah. Now, I personally have... Uh, I've built a, a PBN network um, that's only for lawyers. And so it's all themes, all relevant, only for attorneys. And so no other customer gets on that network. It's just for my attorney group. And I, I think that's really good, which is part of the reason we, I think, now Okay, so now we found, we found a lot more um, links by going to www.daglaw. So what yeah. are you saying here? So, you know, it's a little better. So it looks like most of the, uh, his site probably redirects here. Uh, this is the probably the main URL, I would think. Yeah, URL. That's interesting. Final redirect results. Hmm. Okay, let's take a look at that. I don't know what's up with that. Search for. It's saying that the dev 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 uh, redirects to the non dev dev dev. Well, that's interesting. Um, all these backlinks are coming to the dev dev dev. So I wonder what's going on with that. Uh, what do we have for anchors here? Let's see. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's the same kind of stuff that we saw before, though. Like, yeah. it's just, it's yeah. like all branded, with, but with no keywords whatsoever. I honestly, yeah, a couple of PDN, good PDN links that are themed, and uh, some social probably bump this guy straight up to the top five. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Okay, great. Um, let's, um, let's look at uh, Moz here. Okay. So let's, let's go to the www first. Because there are more links to look at, and that's probably a better indication. It's nice too because they do show you if they're doing any social, which, um, oh, it's still waiting. It's loading. Okay. 
Interestingly enough, Maz shows only 66 links, whereas Majestic shows about 270. Yeah. Which is usually the case. Kind of, kind of odd. And uh, let's see what we've got here. You know what I really like here is I like to be able to sort by domain authority and, um, you know, see kind of how they're, they're coming along. Is your computer yeah. about out of battery? Oh, thanks, Hotel. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Got it. Right. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Virtue Online. Okay, that's interesting. Lonely Conservative. A couple no follows. He probably just got, you know, displayed in the news for one of his cases. Other than that, blackmagic.com? I don't even want to know. Yeah, that's weird. Christian Chan. So I think this guy does some sort of church work or something. That's my guess. So these these things are okay. You know, and Jane's already in the twenties. It's not great. He's got a few of them are higher, but um, you know what? If he just even went in here and was able to change some of the anchors, that would definitely help the cause. But you know, it's, these are news articles. So, so, so you, you're looking at him and you're saying to yourself, like like part of what you're doing in your head is you're assembling. Um, and I, I want to kind of point out what Brian's doing here in his head is he's thinking, remember, we, we got to think about client acquisition, but it's more than that. It's also what are we going to price things at and what's the follow through going to be? You know, how are we going to fulfill upon it? So what Brian's doing is he's starting with the end in mind. He's saying to himself, what am I going to need to do to get this guy to rank? So he's looking, he's saying, well, I know I'm going to want to get citations for this guy. Maybe on Bright Local, you can build them yourself uh, as well or, or hire out sources to do them or do Yext. And saying we want to build out his social profile. So that's one thing. Uh, and then he's also saying to himself, look, if I fire some number of private blog network links to his site with some, uh, you know, with some good anchor text here, you know, uh, some of the keywords he might want to go after, do, uh, maybe we should take a look at the, uh, just even the, the uh, Google Keyword Planner and start getting some ideas at, at some keyword terms that he can go after. Let's take a look at his website first and see if we can get a beat on, on what kind of law he practices. Okay. Of course, uh, the customer can tell us this, but, but still. All right, so this is Raymond Dagg. And let's see what he's got here. So he's got church law, criminal law, guardian law, litigation, not-for-profits, real estate closing, adoption, bankruptcy, traffic violations. So it looks like... He's got a number of things, interestingly enough, that, that are having to do with church stuff, right? Because he's got mm -hmm. church law and religious freedom. You know, on the front page, nice. This, uh, we might have to talk to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this happens every time I do one of these role play things. People go and sign up new clients. All right, so um, law library. Um, so, okay, so, so, so what, what are we seeing here? Um, I, I see someone who's pretty broad. It uh, looks like it, it's him and a partner. Raymond Dag, uh, Dag or Dag, and Karen Martin, um, and then th they basically are handling a pretty broad range of stuff: um, adoption, bankruptcy, business law, church law. There's a lot of keywords out there that we can go after for this guy, um, and 45 years of combined experience, which actually isn't that much, but anyways, whatever. Uh, maybe it's a lot. Who knows? Um, so maybe let's look. Let's take a look at this church law stuff. Um, let, let's punch some of these keywords into the uh, the keyword planner. Um, and where is he based out of? Is he is he based out of uh, Syracuse? Yeah. yeah. Incorporating, yeah. operating, and defending the church. So this is uh, so this is for a uh, a church that's under kind of under fire. And what, let's see what he says about religious freedom, because we're, we're getting an idea of who he's thinking about defending here or attacking with. Yeah. Same thing, right? It goes the same like No, it's something different here. This would make a great national campaign, but locally, I can't imagine there's too many people. 
Right. So, so one of the things you might you, that you might pitch them on is listen. Let's take a look at what we can do locally for you, and then let's also take a look at um, because one of the things that they might weirdly want to rank for is just lawyer Syracuse mm -hmm. because right. they, they're so broad based, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so l let's pull up the keyword planner and, and start plugging in some keywords here. And this is some of the background research that we're going to be doing as we're thinking about like how to do, because we're always thinking what's, how are we going to acquire the client, how are we going to price things, and how are we going to fulfill upon it. And that's always going to be in the same kind of context and conversation. Mm -hmm. So we can do Syracuse lawyer, Syracuse lawyers, Syracuse attorney. And th th this should actually give us some idea of what other keywords are out there. So maybe if we just run this, it'll give us an idea if, if some of these other searches will also you know, bear fruit if there's stuff like traffic violations and stuff like that that might be good. Yeah. And this could be somewhere where, where if you uh, can kind of plus things a little bit. So we're going to go to keyword ideas. And if you hit control plus so we can see this pretty well. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, that's much better. So 140 for Syracuse lawyers, that's a lot. And it's $11 per click. Yeah. That's some money right there. Imagine 100 clicks of $11 for your campaign. That's some cash. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Um, and so... Now, can we get it to, to, to uh, give us some other ideas, uh, things that, that also might rank? Like for Syracuse, what, is it, what does it give us? Let me just zoom this back out a little bit. I'm not sure I'm seeing all this here. Show keyword probably really good. Let's see if that can... I think it went, yeah, so it, it, turn it on and then back off. I, I think you, you turned the broad related terms off. It, like it went on and then it went back off, yeah. Only closely, so if we turn that off, let's see if it... Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, great. So we refresh it. Okay, because you didn't like that. <laughs> multiple, multiple keyword lists to get new keyword ideas. New keyword and keyword ideas. Let's try this one instead. See if it can give us anything. Here we go. Okay. All right, so let's go over here first and see if it's a little bit easier to read. Okay, cool. That's what we're looking for. Wow. So lawyers in Syracuse, New York, 110. Syracuse DUI lawyer, 110. Syracuse lawyers, Syracuse, New York. There's a lot, a lot of searches here. Bankruptcy, Syracuse lawyer, Syracuse, New York. Syracuse attorneys is 70. Divorce lawyers, Syracuse, New York, 70. Mm -hmm. um, Syracuse NY lawyers, 30. Syracuse law firms. So one of the things that we can do is, is look at this guy and say, hey, you know, you, you've got a pretty broad-based agency. I, I think I can pick you up a lot of keywords. Lawyers in Syracuse, New York, you know, Syracuse DUI lawyers. There's a lot of keywords out there for him. Right. Um, and it's very lucrative stuff. I mean, very, very lucrative. We're yeah. talking about, I, like, so let, let's, start, let, let's start thinking about what is it going to take um, for you to get this guy a bunch of rankings for a bunch of these different keywords 
based on what you're seeing, just, just off the top of your head? How, like what, several PBN links and then a bright local run? Yeah, and I'd also, uh, what I would do right along with that would be the, the five big social stuff. I'd, I'd actually, uh, if he doesn't have a YouTube account or Facebook or some of these others, I'd actually optimize them. Yeah. Uh, and what I what I personally do is I use, uh, thanks to Russell and Sue, I use the, the last keyword tool. And I go in there and I take this root keyword, let's say for example, and I could easily show this on the screen. It's like, it's easy. Yeah, do, do you want to pull up, do, do you have TLKT? Do you want to just pull it up? Yeah, um, let me just pause my screen so I don't share my passwords. Okay, great. Here, let's just, let's just stop this video now and we'll save it and then we'll, okay. we'll move on. All right. All right, we've, uh, we've jumped back and we're into uh, Russell and Sue's uh, The Last Keyword Tool, TLKT. You can find this when you go into your OMG um, Project X members area. Russell and Sue and Jimmy have their own tab on your right-hand side, just like the monetization area and, or the supremacy area, whatever. So you can find that down on your right-hand side. Now, um, uh, uh, Brian actually went to OMG Live, and uh, we can't share everything that happened to OMG Live by any means, but um, uh, you've also worked a lot with, with Jimmy on the side and, and of course, uh, a lot with the various tools. There's a, there's a reason why there's kind of a specially carved out place inside of OMG for, for uh, Russell and Sue's stuff. You don't have to have this stuff, um, but this will give you an idea of some of the higher end tools. We've already used some of the, the free tools and some of the more standardized tools. Now we're getting into um, some, you know, some of the more power stuff that we can get working with the Net Network Empires team. So what are we looking at here? This is uh, the last keyword tool. It is, we simply went in here, created a new project, dropped in uh, Syracuse DWI. Mm -hmm lawyer and uh, we just uh, applied a filter um, and uh, you can just choose from some of the three main filters so we started with Jimmy's filter which is great because uh, it's, it's the bottom uh, but there's not enough search by uh, or keywords supporting that um, for all the um, things that he's put in there and so I went to the highly relevant uh, filter and, and Jimmy's uh, filter is just built into the TLKT tool correct? It is. yeah it's pretty sweet okay great and then we simply scroll down. I sort by phrase competition, and so. And can, can you try to zoom in just one more time? We, we really try to get this this control plus stuff as much as possible. Maybe even one that? more time. Yeah, it's getting there. Okay, great, great. Cool. So, uh, so I just click on phrase competition, and I, you know, I'm not looking for any of this kind of stuff. There's one, two keywords. I'm looking for the specific things to Syracuse. So if we're gonna have that conversation with this guy. Uh, potentially, we're going to talk about. It. We just chose this, you know, just randomly. Uh, this particular keyword, 110 exact match searches a month. But you know, I want to sort down here to uh, anything with Syracuse at. Yeah. And you know, we're looking at criminal lawyer, DWI. Uh, again. Syracuse DUI, uh, DWI attorneys is right there. Syracuse DWI lawyers mm -hmm. is there. Yeah. Syracuse D DUI lawyer. Remember, there's DUI and DWI. Yeah. Criminal attorney in Syracuse, criminal lawyer in Syracuse, Syracuse DUI laws. Uh, somebody easily could be uh, jump from Syracuse DUI laws to needing an attorney, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, th by the way, that, that, that's that's uh, really keep that in mind um, when somebody is. Let's say you have something like. Uh, I'm just kind of pick something out here. Let's say you have somebody who is living in. Um, Delaware, Greg lives in Delaware, and let's say they run into a legal issue, um, what, and it's something that, that involves question, let's say it's a custody thing. So let's say you've got a husband and wife getting a divorce, and the husband's wondering what the laws are, then he could be looking up Delaware, you know, um, uh, divorce law, right? And that could be a great place to get a plug for your lawyer and it could be a great way to expand the number of keywords and, and build things out. Just keep that in mind. Go, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. $86 you click. Wow, that's great. Wow. $86. I don't know. You know. We don't know if that's exactly what they're paying because this one suddenly is only 16 Um But the point is there's money happening here. No yeah. question of that. And these definitely are money keywords. That, you know, what I like to do is I like to kind of gauge this. What's the market worth? Relative to how many searches are per month. So what what do you what do you feel like the market is worth? Like, like what uh, can you start putting some numbers on this in your head? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, already just kind of the way I frame this is 
Um, and I wouldn't say this to the customer, but in my head, I'm thinking minimum baseline five hundred dollars a month because Syracuse is, is a bit of a smaller city. I think it's about one hundred and fifty or seventy thousand people here. That would be a bare minimum. I, I just won't go under that because it's not worth my time. Um, I'm thinking probably two thousand might be the cap because this is not a major metro area relative to you know Dallas. Chicago. So, but but even getting into these great juicy keywords like DUI lawyer and all that stuff, you'd still be looking at the cap would be two thousand dollars per month. Yeah, um, it would just because this particular where, where I live is um, they're a little bit behind the times technology, um, technologically speaking. People are more reticent to spend the money. Um, I do have clients that are about two thousand. I did have a client here locally last year, thirty one hundred dollars a month, but um, that that tends to be the exception. Um, One to two thousand tends to be more average. Um, but you know, I, I always tend to go in a little high and then we can whittle that down. So I'd like to give them three options. Okay. And I'm going to come in a little higher, so you know, maybe $2,500 a month. So, so the three options it. that you're thinking are 500, like maybe 500, 1500, 2500, or wh what are you thinking? Um, I, I probably, um, would give them either a thousand as sort of an entry level kind of package. Um, you know, maybe two, maybe somewhere between 1500 and 2000, something like 1750. For you know, moderate, and then just crush the competition package twenty five hundred. Okay, great. So, so, so now you're thinking about that, and what, what would those packages look like from a fulfillment perspective? What would you be looking to do for him for five hundred dollars per month? Five hundred dollars a month for an attorney around here wouldn't buy much. I did that, which is why I wouldn't offer it. But again, in my head, I'm thinking, well, you know, is it down sell? I would rank a video, uh, or I would do perhaps just a Google Places optimization and build citations to their places. And drive that higher, but that's about all you can do for that kind of money. Okay, great. So, so, ma so maybe rank a video or go after their places, and um, then, yeah. um, and then, what are you thinking at that seventeen fifty mark? You know, that's where we can start taking multiple positions on the first page. So we probably combine Google Places and you know ranking, maybe throw a video in there, uh, and then go after like three main keywords. And what would those three keywords be? You think? Well, I mean, from what we can see here so far, without looking at other keywords, you know, I'm assuming that he would want to go after these keywords. Definitely DUI lawyer, um, the, the DWI uh, lawyer, and uh, maybe something a little bit different if there's something else relevant here. And I'd probably lean on him, you know, hey, uh, do you just really want to specialize? Do you, you know, just kind of want to own it for the DUI, DWI kind of thing, or do you want to... Yeah, and I'm sure that Syracuse D, D... Now, how can... It cannot be that Syracuse DUI attorney is really a zero dollar. It's got to be about the same. I know. So, you know, it is... It's just an extrapolation. I don't think any tools... Yeah, no, no, no tools perfect. So, so, so you might go after those three keywords right there. Syracuse D, yeah. DWI lawyer, Syracuse D, DUI lawyer, and Syracuse DUI attorney, for example, could be the three keywords that you go after. You rank their website, a video, and and doing the places. That's seventeen fifty a month. And if they want to bump up, and also have you rank their Facebook page, uh, their Foursquare page, their their Yelp page, or something along those lines, then you know, like maybe rank them one, two, three, four, five. Um, then then you're looking twenty five hundred. Yeah, I mean, total domination is totally worth that. I mean, you know, one one or two good cases, they just made that back, and that's easy to do for you know for. With Sozzle. Yeah, you could build an attorney site for somebody for your cost for, I don't know, three, four, five hundred dollars, something like that, the really high end one. They yeah. don't know the difference, charging three to five grand. Yeah. And, and then they own it, boom, you host it, recurring revenue, going on six months. I tell you, it's money just happens. How, how, how would you build that site out for, for, uh, three, uh, for, for three to five hundred dollars? You know, I build in Photoshop, so um, I come up with, uh, you know, we have a discovery session, boom. You know, we sit down uh, over Skype or in, in person, I prefer Skype, and we just say, tell me a little bit about the look and feel, a couple of basic questions, five or ten questions, then I'll wireframe it, and just, how do you want the layout? Do you want the navigation? Yeah. All right. Uh Here, we're, we're going uh, inside behind the scenes. This is not necessarily something that Brian either. Um, what we're doing is we're showing you how, if you wanted to make a custom website for somebody, where and you're you're actually turning this into a WordPress theme. Is that correct, Brian? Yes. All right. Then what we're doing is th this this is one of Brian's websites that he just put up. Uh, you rank for very highly for what like Dubstep Maker and stuff like that. 
Uh, yeah, the video is like number two in the world, and uh, I just built the silos, and I'm doing some authority stuff to it now, so it should rank probably another month or so. Actually, I can't see the website, by the way. Oh, okay, sorry, I, I, I should uh, should share my screen. Give me a second here. Um, I can see your screen, I just see an email. Oh, it's because I moved, yeah, let me end the screen share and, and start, uh, yeah, I, I have that on my other screen. Switch screen share window. Okay, here we go. Okay. So tell me when you can see Photoshop. Okay, yep. Okay, great. So, so what we have here is essentially an image in Photoshop. And again, don't freak out. What we're doing right here, we're not going to show you how to do this because even me and Brian don't know how to do it. But what we can do is somewhat pull, tease things apart for you a little bit. So if you did, first of all, so you know what value you're getting out of your various uh, skins that are already pre-built, your various skins and themes in uh, WordShop that are already pre-built, stuff like Genesis and, and Thesis and Catalyst and so forth. Um, and, uh, and also, this is something that you can do. Uh, the process, the total process for you, Ryan, is you're sitting down with a client, getting an idea of what they want out of their website um, on Skype, then you're sitting down with uh, a Romanian graphics designer, and you're explaining to her what you, um, you know, how you want this video created. You're paying her less than $200, um, and then she's creating a site. We're going to pull this apart a little bit for you. I say site, but this is actually just a, a Photoshop um, file. And I, I've done this process as well, by the way. I've, I've gone through the same process. It's one of the reasons why I, it's been years, but, but I want to show you how, how we did this. And, um, and then what, what you're doing is you're taking this Photoshop file and sending it to somebody who's skilled with taking a Photoshop pi uh, file, doing something called slicing, uh, which is just a technical term. He's going to use a tool, uh, a tool like Dreamweaver, slice the site up, and turn it into a finished, a finished web page. And let's, let me show you what the finished web page looks like here. So if I go to, is it dubstepmaker.com? Uh, online dubstep creator.com online uh, stepcreator.com. I've already got pulled it up. I already have it pulled up because I've already looked at this site. I am a subscriber, by the way. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. So I'm going to pull this up on our screen here. So this is what the, the end website looks like. And it looks, looks great. You know, Brian's going to continue to work on this and personalize it, but it is, you know, it is up and it is converting. It's getting opt-ins right now. Um, so it's only week old. 31 leads and uh, I think this is the ninth day, so that's great. Start. Yeah, that it's a that's a fantastic start. So as we see, if we hover over these buttons, they're working HTML buttons now. Um, this is a working opt-in box where we can type in our name and our email address. Yep. Um, we've got a, a demos button here that we can go to, and we've got a YouTube video that's embedded. I've got my uh, power saver on, so you're not seeing the embedded YouTube video. But the YouTube video is what you expect. It's a picture-in-picture -picture video of, uh, of Ryan, uh, which actually I just pulled up right there. You can see him, and he's, got, he's inside of Dr. Drum, which is one of the um, uh, uh, tools for dubstep uh, creation. So that's the video right there. And then he's got some, some words here and so forth. Um, and then an ad for Dr. Drum, which is an affiliate program that he's signed up for. Okay. So that's, that's what this is about here. And then the page goes on and on. Brian's kind of pulled it apart a little bit, made a, uh, made a video showing how it works and, and you know, comparing some different products and then get instant access now at the bottom. So he's got this all set up. So, so this is what the, the end website looks like when it's all put together. But it started just as this Photoshop file, right? Yep. yep. And the, the Photoshop file... Uh, it, it's it's all done in layers. So, for example, um, I don't know how well folks can see this, um, uh, uh, but uh, when I click the I the, the little eye thing right here, uh, I'm making the uh, logo just disappear. Okay, because that's that's the header layer. So this is a whole file folder that has the logo that has the, uh, the clickable icon for de best dubstep maker, uh, how to make dubstep, make your own beats, dubstep maker online. So th these are all just different, uh, different menu options. 
and then she's created for the banner, which is this guy right here, you know, who's, you know, in front of an audience of thousands, that's the big benefit. There's thousands of people cheering him on and they're uh, having a wonderful day. And then this is the instant access, this is the opt-in folder, this is the demo, and then this is the make slick beeps. So, so basically at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're kind of creating what amounts to, I, I remember when I was like in grade school, we'd make you know, every once in a while collages, right? And you'd pull, pic, like, like you cut a picture out of a magazine and paste it one place. You cut another picture out of a magazine, paste it another place. You take a sticker that you have and put it in another place. And that all comes together to be like a collage. That's really what you're doing with Photoshop. Photoshop is very much like a collaging tool. You might not even design, for example, this logo, she didn't design it in Photoshop. She used, what was it, Adobe uh, Image Maker? Illustrator. Yeah, Adobe Illustrator to create the logo. Again, this is not necessarily something you can do, uh, that, that you will do, but we want to a little bit demystify things for you because this is the ultimate process, is creating this good-looking image uh, you know, that it's something that you want and something that you're happy with and then paying for somebody to turn the, the .psd file into a working HTML website uh, or into a Photoshop theme uh, in this case. And then that theme could then just be loaded directly into your computer. So the final cost to you winds up being uh, a little uh, around $200 to have this, this created, this Photoshop image created, and then around $200 for another guy to turn it into a WordPress theme. It's a working theme that you can then uh, move around and work with. Yeah, roughly. Yep. Um, and can you, uh, could you open up WordPress and, and take us inside of that theme and so we can see what it looks like from the sure. inside from dubstepcreator.com? Again, th this is us. Uh, what we're doing here is a little bit demystifying uh, the process of website creation. And the neat thing is a custom site like this, you can sell this for like 4000 bucks or 5000 bucks. Oh, yeah. So, All day long. And, and, and Brian's creating this for an end of four or 500 bucks. And, and this is something like you can just hire out on Elance, right? Like you can find a graphic designer that you like, that, you know, you can go through their stuff, have, have them create it, and, uh, and then, you know, there you go. Yep. Okay, so uh, I need to share my screen here. Okay. And you can get these things done for a whole lot less. I'm into really uh, custom, uh, higher-end look, so I spend a little bit more, and my people are good. I've been running with them for two years. Yeah, I mean, you just sold a website for $14,000, right? I did. I did. So, you know, it definitely pays off. And my cost on that, you know, can be as little as, you know, four or $500. And I could spend more uh, by the time. It, again, you just don't need to. You know, I mean, I just did a condominium uh, website, some lady down in Florida. And my total cost then was about 350 bucks, And I sold it for thirty-seven fifty. So, you know, 10%. It's not bad. Great. Uh, okay, so we're in the theme. I don't know if you can see my screen. I can. Okay. And the reality is that this is really painless uh, to do. It's a simple WordPress theme that looks really pretty. And, you know, by the way, I'll uh, give credit to uh, Russell and Sue. So I built this site is Silo. I'm using the oh, it is Silo. Silo. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I, mean, I, want, I want to take the top slots organically as well as my video. We're into, we're into Project X. The SEO domination here. Love it. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, so let me just take you, take you inside. Let's see an update, for example. And it's really straightforward stuff. So here's one of my pages, music software. It's a, a child of the uh, of the main silo landing page. It's with a dash. Looks and like so you, you used vSilo to create this, is that correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we used. Um, uh, we'll ask people tool, and um, I think this one we use Kraken. Usually Kraken or, or um, uh, DWS, but um, that's what's great about this. You don't even need those if you don't want. I, no, I take that back. This one I built manually using the vSilo plugins. Really cool. And the keyword planner and uh, some things like that. So it's like a text editor, right? And then you can just put your, um, you know, your information down here. So, so can you can you go to the theme so we can actually see where the theme was installed? Oh, sure, yep. Yeah. Okay, so we go to appearance and themes. Boom, there it is. That's it. And that's it right there. And then yeah. that that just, boom, the theme is done. And then 
what happens when we, like, like how do we uh, deal with the various elements of the theme? Does the theme itself have its own little, um, little world that you work in? No, that's what's great about building sites this way, which is why I like it. It's completely um, uh, intuitive and innate. It's baked right in, no different than if you're going to choose one of these other themes. You wouldn't know what's on the, on the front end of the site when you're in the back end when okay. you build sites this way, which is cool. And I like it that way because I don't want to have to fit it with different... Yeah, things. different settings and different uh, customizations. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with with those different settings and customizations, but it's good for us to realize that. So let's look at let's look at that homepage so we can see how you plugged in all the rest of that content. Okay. All right. So for example, here this is one of my uh, silos, best dev, dev set maker. So you click on that. I change the page structure because it's an exact match. I won't go into detail on that, but don't want to get over optimized uh, penalties. And here are my uh, uh, my supporting articles uh, for this particular site. Right, music software, DAW producer, and software. Yep, and pretty straightforward stuff. Um, and again, this site's only a week old, so I've got some work to do for sure and work on conversion and add more videos. But, you know, hey, it's uh, it's a good start. Like I said, 31 leads in eight days or something like that. So it's Yeah, it's a great start. start. Yep, and uh, that's it. I mean, that's what's great about this. Uh, when you build a theme this way, it's... It's exactly the way that you want it to be. Drew a picture, that becomes your website. It's just that simple, at least on the front end. Got it. Yep. And then uh, let's see if I put anything here in the widgets. Uh, yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll uh, have my coder uh, put in something like here so I can easily control where I want my YouTube channel to go. So he just drops in a little uh, widget here, and uh, I drop in all my social stuff, because social is important. Um, for example, uh, here, uh, here's the uh, the text on the, the overlay on the top banner. Yeah. And here's here's my three. So if I want to go pop in a new video, boom, right there. Right. So it's and just a widget right there. Just a widget. And these are custom. You know that uh, my coder or any good coder will do. That, you know, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Just give me the ability to interact with with the image. Is what what this is allowing me to do. Here's my eight letter. Pretty straightforward. Right. Gives me a lot of control, and I like being able to control all the elements, not just the elements that a particular designer or theme dictates to me. I've built a lot of websites over the years for marketing and for clients, and this is the, the method that I've settled on two years ago, about three years into it. Right. So, so, so j just very straightforward in terms of uh, you know, the if you're going to design sites this way then the designer should be able to show you a back end that looks like this, that he's already done. The, the guy who takes it from the Photoshop file into making it into a theme, he should just be able to show you a setup that looks exactly like this if you can't work with somebody different. Pretty much, you know, and he didn't have to add in these widgets here in the back end for me. He just could have said, you know, um, probably kept these hidden, but he does this for me. You know, he knows that I like this. Hey, I want to be able to control... Like this here, for example, um, the uh, the inner banner, right? Make sick beats in minutes. So what if I want to change this text because it, it stinks at conversion? Okay, well, here it is. So I can go change this on the fly in 30 seconds. Right. With, like two mouse clicks. Right. And to me, that's a lot of control, especially when it comes to making money online. It's important to be able to make changes on the fly that are quick and easy. I don't need a designer or coder to do that. He coded it once for me. I think there should be a video right there. <laughs> that, that that should be it right here. There should be a live video with you right here instead yeah. of where it says make sick beat, uh, beat, beats in minutes. First of all, I don't think that they're in a rush to make sick, sick beats, so I don't think you have to worry about it in minutes. Um, I, yeah. I, I would say uh, start making sick beats, and then I would have a video of you below mm -hmm. uh, and, and have it be either picture-in-picture picture or full-screen video. Um, yeah. I think picture-in-picture picture could work fine, but I think it should be right there where it says even if you haven't got a clue about creating sick beats, I think that the video embed should be right there, you looking at them. I think that that would, would kill. Yeah, great. Thank you. I appreciate that. And a new site, hey, I'm always looking for help. Yeah, <laughs> okay, great. All right, um, great. So, so th this is just a little bit of insight into, into website creation, but Brian makes a ton of money this way, a ton of money this way. And so, look, sometimes you can just 
use a, a copy paste thing. I, you know, I, I, I sell, uh, I sell Tuscan right and left. You know, I, I, I sell Catalyst Dynamic Tuscan for a bunch of money for thousands. Okay. Again and again, it's easy to do. Um, but, but this is custom created. This is something that Brian really has a lot of good feelings about. Can, can we give, uh, people, is there another site that we can show them that's a, another example? I'm yeah, sure BrianMagnosi.com, right? Uh, Magnosi sure Web? Uh, Magnosi Web Marketing.com? Yeah, BrianMagnosi.com too, but that's an old site. I haven't touched it, but uh, I will show you that as an example. And, uh, so I this is the same basic thing that started as a, and by the way, what do you have there on your own site is exactly what I want you to have on your exactly. new site, right? So you straight to the person, and this is great. Like, th th like this is a great feeling. Um, and this is a great looking site. So this started as a HTML, or sorry, as a Photoshop file mm -hmm. that you then yeah. had converted over. Yep, and then each of these, same deal, they're just images that, uh, you know, were, uh, were just kind of loaded in and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. So, um, yeah, pretty straightforward stuff. And this is just a unique theme and, and uh, let me show you another one here. Photoshop. Speaking of Photoshop, it can be really, really uh, valuable learning that skill. And uh, this one I haven't touched, like I said, probably a year and a half, so the video is kind of dead. But you can at least kind of get the point. You know, I, I did this in Photoshop, this little film strip. It took me a day, so and it was a lot of work, but I think it turned out really well. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's just a Photoshop action. I know that one yeah. actually. Which is cool. You know, Sandy here. This uh, this is an old product that I had, so you know that's Photoshop. I mean, this entire site is Photoshop. And yeah, I, I use Photoshop a lot. And we're not saying that you need to run off and use Photoshop, but this, this will give you some ideas of places you can go with things. Exactly. You can hire this out for cheap. I mean, there's amazing designers. 99designs or um, uh, uh, Elance or uh, Odesk. I, I personally use Odesk a lot. And, and, and the, the reason we say this is if you don't be afraid to sell a $4,000 website because it can be fulfilled. And yeah. it, it doesn't have to be that difficult. Like something like this can be... You know, taking some some fo some skill and focus into hiring uh, someone to make a Photoshop page, and then somebody to translate that into a WordPress theme, and you can have something that looks like Magnosi Web Marketing. That, that that's not the first step. The first step in that case would be to have a client who wants to pay you a bunch of money for that. Um, but then but then you can do that. Right. Yep. All right. Great. Lots of cool things. Great. All right. I'm going to stop this recording and just make sure we've got it in the can. All right, now this is a great looking website. Uh, it's another example of a great looking website that Brian's created. And you did this again in Photoshop. Um, so four grand you got for this site. How much did it cost you to make? Uh, about $350. $350, so about a $3,700 profit, $3,650 profit. Yeah. Great. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, this was easy peasy. The most expensive thing was just creating this custom logo up here. Yeah, uh, and I mean that said, it was you know this is a pretty straightforward kind of deal. And then my coder just kind of threw in the form here. That was maybe an extra twenty five dollars. You know, a lot of customers just really, really ecstatic. If you saw her old site, you just would would have wanted to just throw up. And the homepage looks beautiful. It does look beautiful. Yeah, and it's functional too. You can click on each of the names, so it just it's, that's what's great about this. And, and the funny thing is, once you sell them a site like this, then then suddenly you can sell them a thousand dollars a month for SEO. <laughs> absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, this is great. So this started as a base image that's got these great looking stamps. Um, and w what did you tell your designer? I basically, once I got with the, with the customer, she said, you know, I, I want to be able to display my properties because each of these is a name of one of her rental properties in Fort Myers. And so I said, okay, we want to be able to highlight, we want to share her vision, so we want to show something that looks appealing, draws on the emotions for her properties, for these cool names that she's given, and we want to be able to do that in a way that we can see them all on the front screen, and the customer said, I want palm trees and a beach. I at least want a palm tree if you can't give me the beach. So we sort of came up with this design about the third, the third revision. Mm -hmm. And she said, I absolutely love it. This is, this is incredible. I had no idea you could do something like this. So, so despite three revisions, it still stayed at, at $350? Yeah, 
Yeah, because that's the way I, I view that. Um, we do three revisions. I still pay the same amount for the design. If we go beyond that, then you know, I typically would just eat it. it. Might cost me another fifty bucks or seventy-five dollars, but um, yeah, it's still worth it because you got the four thousand dollar paycheck. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, great. And so, what the customers providing you with is their pictures. So you've got uh, se seven pi or eight pictures from the customer. Um, these are generally going to get dragged and dropped into Photoshop into what are called Photoshop actions, um, and it's just it's basically like a little mini program that turns a picture into uh, kind of a stylized picture, a little bit like Instagram does, where they might make the, uh, a regular picture and then you click a button and it goes black and white instead of just being a normal picture. Uh, mm -hmm. In this case, they, what, what, what it's doing is it's creating these uh, little stamp looking borders around it and then that looks great. Uh, uh, you know, Southern Hospitality is the name of one of her properties. Then that pops up right here, it looks great. And expensive stuff, it's plenty of money for her if somebody takes this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so she wanted to, you know, uh, to just be able to highlight a property, she wanted to change it on, de on demand. And, and like we just showed on the dubstep one, you know, we just created basically a widget so that she can go in there with a two mouse clicks, change anything she wants. It's painless. That you could teach a fifth grader, uh, you know, honestly, really anyone who can point and click, and um, it's it's kind of almost foolproof. It's uh, to build these sites because that's the beauty of WordPress, right? And to have these little widget boxes that you know, my my guy makes is we build sites that are that look great but are functional really functional so that yeah. they don't need code or anything techy to do it. So, so, so one of the things that you're going after is your client being able to modify the site. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Yeah, yeah and that obviously makes things easier for you. And of course, you could do it so where you're charging them per revision, but it's just not a nice feeling. And, and you, like, it's not really a great business for you to be in the business of revising client websites for 30 bucks here or 50 bucks there or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. not a very good sale. All right, terrific. Thank you for that second example. You're welcome. A third example.